really what's happened then since August in my business is I've noticed a huge uplift in the number of interviews. I've noticed a huge uplift in the number of conversations I've been having with clients and quality candidates. I've, uh, I've sold uh, five engaged searches in the past three months. Um, I've actually got to the point now where I've got clients queuing up to give me money on deposit for the next search. Um, and I'm having to hold them off, you know, not, not, not disrespectfully, but I'm having to hold them off and say, listen, not right now. I'm happy to take that search on in six weeks time because I'm fully committed to what I've got right now. And they're happy to wait. I, I fired a couple of clients. I, I fired longstanding clients that I've worked with for years and I, I've replaced them with better, newer clients that work on a retained or engaged basis with me exclusively. So, so really, it, it comes back to the decision. I had to make that decision. Mike Gianta, with respect, or Kathleen Kirk or, or, or Francis couldn't make that decision for me. I had to make that call. And you're right. I, I, I definitely... Um, I definitely didn't believe that it was possible in my niche or my industry because I'd never tried it before. And, and I suppose, again, it goes back to what we spoke of earlier about the fear of failure. I was afraid, I was genuinely afraid of that first call with a client to talk to them about an engaged search. But, you know, with, with the Recruiter U program, the beauty of it is it's a building block process. It's a process. Everything is step by step. You're given... You're given, you know, I wouldn't say it's scripted, but you're certainly given a lot of tools going into those conversations that give you the confidence to say, you know what, this opportunity, I'm going to respectfully pass on it because it's not the right time for you or for me to work together. And you're leaving that door slightly ajar for that client to come back to you at a later stage. So it's, um, you know, I, 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 I spoke with, um, I spoke with, with, with uh, Tina Marie about this um, the other day. And I said, you know, for a long time, I was like that, that, that guy, you know, that, in the Bible where the guy goes out and he's sowing seed and some of the seed lands on, on, on rocks and it just doesn't take root. And, and, and I was that kind of rocky, thorny ground for a long time. The, the seeds that the recruiter you were giving me just weren't really going into embed and weren't taking root. And really what I've noticed in the last, certainly in the last six to eight months, is that the, the, the systems and the, 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 the learnings and the lessons that I've, you've collectively taught me, and I say you collectively, all of you, have taught me over the last three years, it's just started to come through in a torrent. And now I'm starting to see the evidence of it. I mean, I'm, I'm now focusing on, you know, I started out at the start of this year thinking my ideal number is X. My ideal number now is X plus Y, because I'm thinking, screw that, I'm going to hit for the stars here. So, yeah, I'm having a phenomenal year. And I, I, I can't say that it's necessarily market-led. I think a lot of it is, is completely in here. It's completely in my mindset. And you used the phrase earlier about getting out of your own way. I mean, frankly, I was getting in my own way for probably 19 years. Mm -hmm. We all do. We all do. And, and there's, two, there's two types of people, right, Gerard? There's the type of person like you that you go, I'm in my own way. And then there's other people that go, well, you don't understand... Gerard or Mike or Kathleen, the niche is this, the market's this, I live in a country with this. Okay. <laughs> but so now you're stacking, you're not, but some people stack evidence that it's the, the, the outcome is beyond them. Um, and what I love, you know, just watching you, and I think I've told you this a couple of times, is even though you were that rocky or crumbly, you know, stonier or drier ground, is one, we kept throwing seed down. <laughs> and, and two, you kept looking for water and dirt. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, your persistence uh, and self-awareness watching you grow has just been an honor, Gerard. 